my today my lecture is about ionic bonding and ionic compounds uh, first of all i would like to introduce and i would like to emphasize uh, the importance of bonding that why atoms form bonds the purpose of bonding for all the atoms is that to complete their outermost shell because all the atoms they want to complete their outermost shell either these are metals either these are metallic atoms or non metallic atoms all of them their ultimate goal is their ultimate objective is to complete their valence shell their outermost shell and when their valence shell will be completed then only then they will get stable like the noble gases because the noble gases in group 8 helium neon argon krypton radon xenon these are all the noble elements noble gas elements they have already complete their uh, they have already their uh, their shell is completed their out, uh, um, their orbits are completed so but all the other elements they complete their, they want to complete their shell by through bonding <clears throat> so this is the purpose of the bonding why atoms form bonds to complete their outermost shell their valence shell and for the purpose of uh, completing their outermost shell they either they lose or gain electron as in case of ionic bonding or they share the electron as in case of covalent bonding so to complete their outermost shell they complete their outermost shell either by losing or gaining electrons in case as in case of ionic bonding or by sharing electron as in case of covalent bonding so uh, now specifically we are talking about today we uh, in this topic we are talking about ionic bonding so how ionic bonding takes place let's emphasize and focus on ionic bonding that during ionic bonding formation during ionic bonding transfer of electron takes place between metals and non metals where metals they form they lose the electron metals metallic atoms so metals lose electrons metallic atoms they lose electron while the non metallic atoms or non metals they gain electron during ionic bonding now here the question arises that why metallic atoms they lose electron so the reason is that metallic uh, atoms they have either one electron in their outermost shell or two electrons or three electrons now for example in case of uh, um, sodium or potassium or rubidium they have one electron in their outermost shell all these are alkali metals i am talking about metals so they have one electron in the outermost shell now it is easy for them to lose their electron rather than to gain seven electrons in case of sodium or in case of lithium because no one will give them seven electrons to complete their shell rather it is easier for the metals to lose their electron one electron or two electrons so they lose electron and in this way the inner shell is already complete i will draw the diagram later on and i will show you and in case of non metals as they have seven electrons in their outermost shell for example fluorine chlorine uh, and bromine etc or they have six electron in their outermost shell so they they just need one more electron to complete the shell in case of chlorine or fluorine or in case of oxygen its outermost shell has six electrons so it need just two more electrons to complete its shell so the non metals will gain the electron and in this way their outermost shell will get completed so this is transfer of electron this is ionic bonding so during ionic bond formation 
transfer of electron takes place between metals and non-metals where metals lose electrons and non-metals gain electron and when metals the metallic atoms they lose electrons so they form positive ions why they form positive ions because when the electrons become less so protons are increased because originally basically every atom is neutral so when the electrons are shifted so the protons in the nucleus they get in excess in this way the metals by losing electron they get positive charge and they they form positive ions and on the other hand the non metals the non metallic elements when they gain electrons when the electrons become in excess when the electron become in surplus so as we know that electrons have negatively charged particles they are they are negatively charged particles so by gaining electrons by uh, as the electrons become in excess they become in surplus so then the non metals they form negative ions so in this way the ions are formed positive ions and negative ions metals form positive ions and non metals form negative ions and as now the positive and negative ions are formed so the strong electrostatic forces of attraction exist among oppositely charged ions in ionic lattice i ionic lattice is formed i ionic crystal structure is formed where the positive ions are bonded with negative ions on one corner there are positive ions on the other corner there are negative ions and there is strong electrostatic force of attraction which is existing uh, between the oppositely charged ions that is positive ions and negative ions so this is called ionic bonding and in this way the ionic bonds are formed between oppositely charged particles between oppositely charged ions now let me explain uh, and elaborate the ionic bonding through an example uh, example of ionic bond here i am giving an example of magnesium and oxygen where magnesium is a metal and oxygen is a non metal the proton number of magnesium is 12 and its uh, electronic configuration means that arrangement of electrons in the orbits it is like this as we know that the proton number of magnesium is 12 so it will be having 12 protons and 12 electrons so these how these 12 electrons will be arranged in the orbits of magnesium that in the first shell there will be two electrons then the uh, remaining electrons will be filled in the second shell and the second shell has the capacity to hold maximum eight electrons so there will be eight electrons in the second shell and the remaining two electrons will accommodate in the last shell in the third shell for example so here i am drawing the same thing by dot and cross diagram so the first shell will be having two electrons this is the first shell or first orbit then the second shell will hold maximum eight electrons 1234561234567 and 7 and 8 and now the remaining two electrons out of these 12 electrons the remaining two electrons will be there in the last shell in the valence shell so this is the valence shell or outermost shell of magnesium <coughs> now come to oxygen oxygen is a non metal its proton number is 8 and as its proton number is 8 it is having eight electrons eight uh, protons and eight electrons so these 
eight electrons how they are arranging in the uh, orbits what will be the electronic configuration of oxygen that out of these eight electrons two electrons will be there in the first shell and six electrons will be there in the outermost shell so i will draw it with the help of cross this is called dot and cross diagram one two why it is uh, drawn by dot and cross diagram just to differentiate for example if we are representing the electrons of one atom by dot we will represent the electrons of other atoms by cross just to differentiate so one two and then now so in the first shell of oxygen there are two electrons and the remaining electrons will be there the remaining six electrons will be there in the second shell so one two three four five and six now oxygen is having six electron in the valence shell in its outermost shell so let's i i also label it valence shell okay this is the valence shell of oxygen this is the valence shell of magnesium now as the magnesium uh, as oxygen is having six electron in the valence shell so it needs just two more electrons if it gets two more electrons so its sh shell will be completed its outermost shell will be completed its valence shell will be completed and its valency will get satisfied it will get stable atoms remember atoms only get stable when their shell is completed when their valence shell their outermost shell is completed by the electrons so now these two electrons will be shifted from here from here from magnesium to oxygen this the electrons will be shifted and when oxygen will receive two electrons from magnesium so its shell will be completed now what will be the position 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 now oxygen got two more electrons eight electrons are completed its octet is completed on the other hand here magnesium lost two electrons so by losing electron what will be the benefit of magnesium that its uh this valence shell now i am uh erasing it so its valence shell is empty its outermost shell got empty and when its outermost shell got empty so inner shell is already complete inner shell the inner shell has eight electrons so magnesium also got stable and oxygen also got stable now magnesium turned into magnesium ion magnesium turned into magnesium ion now it will be called magnesium ion and it is having the charge plus 2 and on the other hand oxygen is turned into oxide ion minus 2 now let me explain further that why it is called plus 2 when why it is called minus 2 as i told you that originally every atom has equal number of protons and electrons equal number of positive and negative particles so in case of magnesium here it is magnesium i am drawing this type of structure tower structure to represent that a magnesium is having 12 protons 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 protons and 12 electrons equal number of protons and equal number of electrons and similarly here it is oxygen oxygen is having uh eight protons and eight electrons originally basically before bonding 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 eight protons and eight electrons when magnesium will lose the electron so i will say that magnesium its two electrons are reduced its two electrons are reduced because they are lost and they are shifted to oxygen so oxygen 
इट गॉट टू मोर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स टू सरप्लस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स टू एक्सेसिव इलेक्ट्रॉन्स दैट्स वाई ऑक्सीजन गॉट माइनस टू चार्ज बिकॉज ऑफ द टू एडिशनल इलेक्ट्रॉन्स बिकॉज ऑफ द टू एडिशनल नेगेटिवली चार्ज पार्टिकल्स नाउ ऑक्सीजन इज टर्न इन टू ऑक्साइड आइन नेगेटिव आइन एंड मैग्नेशियम बाय लूजिंग टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इट्स प्रोटॉन्स आर इंक्रीज बिकॉज ओरिजिनली प्रोटॉन्स एंड इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वर इक्वल बट नाउ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर रिड्यूस्ड इन रिटर्न वट हैपन वट वॉज द इफेक्ट ऑफ लूजिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन दैट प्रोटोन्स इन द न्यूक्लियस दे गॉट सरप्लस दैट्स वाई मैग्नेशियम गॉट प्लस टू चार्ज एन ऑक्साइड का गॉट माइनस टू चार्ज नाउ मैग्नेशियम इज द पॉजिटिव आइन एन ऑक्साइड इज द नेगेटिव आइन मेटल्स फॉर्म पॉजिटिव आइन्स बाय लूजिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड नॉन मेटल्स फॉर्म नेगेटिव आइन्स बाय गेनिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन्स बाय अचीविंग इलेक्ट्रॉन्स दिस इज वट हैपन्स इन आयनिक बॉन्डिंग एंड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस पॉजिटिव एंड नेगेटिव आइन्स द ऑपोजिट electrostatic forces of attraction exist start acting upon the positive and negative uh, charges so, uh, start acting upon the positive and negative ions oppositely charged ions so uh, i am representing this by a crystal lattice so this uh, black one is representing black circle is representing magnesium ion and the blue uh, circle is representing oxide ion so here it is magnesium ion on one corner which is the positive ion so here it is oxide ion negative ion so if it is negative ion it is positive ion magnesium ion and if it is magnesium ion on the other corner there will be oxide ion negative ion and if it is oxide ion the other corner is magnesium ion positive ion and then negative ion and then the positive ion and then negative ion in this way a crystal lattice and it keeps extending it the the thing does not end here rather it keeps extending here towards right towards left if this is the negative ion oxide ion so here it will be positive ion and if on the front it is magnesium ion so at the back side it will be if it is uh, oxide ion it's magnesium ion and in this way each oxide ion will be surrounded by six magnesium ion in the crystal lattice and each magnesium ion will be surrounded by six oxide ions and strong electrostatic forces of attraction will be acting between these positive and negative ions let's in case of this these are the strong electrostatic strong electrostatic forces of attraction electrostatic forces of attraction so this is specific for ionic bonds and in this way the ionic compounds are formed and there are strong electrostatic forces of attraction which are acting between the oppositely charged ions and this is the reason that why ionic compounds have very high melting and boiling point and they are very stable at the end i will give you some sample questions from the past papers from the cambridge past papers this will help you to um, give you an idea that what type of questions will come in the exams so try to solve these questions i am uh, i included mcqs as well as theory questions from the ionic bonding topic and um, then uh, if you have any questions related to the uh, these past paper questions so then you can ask me in the comments